yeah, policing in this country has moved in tactics from a community-based policing model, which is cops walking a beat and getting to know the people they patrol, into a, a reactionary-based policing model. Uh, reactionary-based police policing models uh, basically view every U.S. city as a uh, – uh, population that's trying they're trying to balkanize and um it, it's basically uh, they, they're treating the american people as if though there's a counterinsurgency happening and and you know all the criminals in quote are the uh insurgents and police are the uh standing army and i find that very disturbing but i i full-on believe and i understand there's people in law enforcement that i'm affectionate with that i that i feel um you know a personality bond with that i've been doing this because i've been doing this almost eight years Mm. And they have they absolutely have a right to self-defense. They have a right uh, uh, to not die at work, you know, and to, to take measures to make sure that they don't die at work. So I, I have compassion for them. And I'm glad that that I reached out to you, Pete, because I need you to play devil's advocate and I need you to, you know, lend your voice to mine and get this through to most people. But what cops need to understand is that there are other ways that can uh, they can uh disarm people without having to kill them and we're going to get into some get into this some when you go through my article that I wrote but uh, for instance law enforcement in the United Kingdom as a matter of common practice disarm people with ASP ASP batons and uh uh, you know, pepper spray on on the regular. They do it constantly, and I think law enforcement agencies need to be sending, um, you know, cops over to Europe to get training and and, and different types of equipment. Oh, you know, I don't and agree. I'll, and, and they would be more adequately uh, able to, uh, you know, disarm people with knives and not feel as if their their li lives are threatened because it can be done and it's proven to be done in wow. the United Kingdom. I know, but I, I got to be honest with you, I don't, I don't agree with that. And and I and I, I, I here's my, you know, my Second Amendment position on, uh, you know, as a conservative, uh, I believe that uh, an equal and opposite force, as far as self defense is concerned. Uh, if others are going to have AR-15s, I believe that the populace should have AR-15s. It balances it out. Um, oh, but I I'm agree with that, actually. Yeah, and but but I don't think that the police should have batons uh, to go up against what we now know the criminals are going to be carrying guns. But it, hold that thought. Hold that thought. We're going to come back. We're going to have a discussion. Right. Because I misspoke, what? and I'll clarify it later. Okay, good. I made a mistake. When we come back, I'm going to tell you what that mistake was. I got jaded because I watched too many YouTube videos. And I, I think that's a big problem right now is that we can't be hating the cops just because we watched all those YouTube videos of these cops making really bad mistakes. Uh, so I, I, we'll talk about that mistake when we come back uh, from this next break. You guys don't go away. So, um, you know, truth is not uh, just one sided. The truth is, and I've been telling this story and like people are kind of shocked. Uh, Mike, they're they're shocked because I came out after 619 days and I could be so spiteful and hateful and just be vile and nasty. But I came out and I, and I actually spoke to people up there in Multnomah County. As a matter of fact, up there in Portland, I had listeners they, they were sheriff's deputies that were my COs and they had private conversations with me. And you're like, dude, I've been listening to you for two years. Not all cops are bad. Cut your crap out with that. They're not. And you know what? I, I have to be honest with you. I, I had some time to myself and I said, you know, watching YouTube videos and, and seeing these cop make bad mistakes and to hold them accountable to the, mis you know, the bad mistakes that they're making. You, I don't believe that you should ever, ever, ever. If I were a police officer, I would never shoot an unarmed man period if he has a gun that's a different scenario I don't, I don't know how i would react i haven't been in that scenario but i wouldn't I, one thing i do know is i would not shoot an unarmed man period if, if he goes to reach for a gun and you know i don't care if he's reaching for a popsicle it could be anything that he's reaching he's reaching for his cell phone i have to see a gun before i ever think about sending around uh, you know, towards towards that hum that other human being. So I've held them accountable, but 
I made the mistake of broad stroking all of law enforcement because of YouTube videos that we're watching. That has an impact on our society. That has a huge impact on our society right now in general. Now, you are in the streets. You're seeing, you know, how the how the cops are, are acting. Why don't you compare that to what's happening to society on the Internet? And can you honestly say that all cops that you interact with are all really bad per those videos? What, what are you saying? Balance all of that out yourself. Sure. You have firsthand sure. experience with after, this. After documenting police and listening to police scanners and going out on citizens patrols and and uh, observing them professionally for almost eight years, I can tell you that it would be completely illogical and silly to say that all cops are bad. Mm. Um, the thing is, though, okay, culturally— we have been indoctrinated generally, uh, generationally to believe that cops are above uh, an average citizen. And until the uh, audio-video recording technology has become so ubiquitous, um, the thing is, is that that's basically the great equalizer. It used to be a cop's word was, uh, you know, sacrosanct in court, and, and nobody could touch it. It was beyond any refutation. Oh, it but still now, is, uh, actually. It, st it still is, by the way. I mean, it, right. we've seen them in the federal court system testifying on the stand they come in with their pretty uniforms and they literally just psychologically skull plug the jury to of course oh yeah but, but here's the thing yes it would be silly and illogical to say that all cops are evil or or uh, as uh, the the famous anarchist uh, acronym that i like to use acab or all cops are bastards and here's the counterpoint to that uh pete i believe that all cops are bastards in this sense how many times have you ever seen a video where a cop breaks the law or illegally shoots someone and he's arrested on the spot. I will believe that that, that that all cops aren't bastards when good cops start arresting bad ones. Now, there's these big, long investigations where a cop could be, uh, you know, arrested, you know, years, years or months and months after committing the crime. But until they start policing themselves <laughs> in, in a way that makes logical sense, I'm going to say that there are no good cops just in that sense. Wow. When they stop standing around twiddling their thumbs when a murder happens or when, when a cover up happens and actually starts arresting each other, then I will believe that they're holding each other that's accountable a, but right point. now it we we get we, what we get back from law enforcement when when there's a public perception of a wrong against them is we've investigated ourselves and determined that there has no been there's, there's been no fault and i think that's a cultural problem within law enforcement